Maggie and Sickers, I'm Nick. We put the word out on our Instagram stories earlier today asking people what they'd like to see more of and there was quite a few people that asked us to do some more laptop related content so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna test out an RTX Thunderbolt 3 eGPU. Gigabyte sent over their brand new RTX 2070 gaming box designed to connect to your laptop or your desktop via Thunderbolt 3. We haven't really covered many eGPUs on the channel and the ones that we have covered we've actually made ourselves. So yeah, I thought it was about time that we checked some out. Let's do it. I've always really loved the idea of eGPUs and their ability to breathe new life into your laptop. I bought my Dell XPS 9550 uh, in a bit of a weird time before mobile Pascal GPUs. It was when Nvidia still made M versions of their desktop GPUs that were kind of not really close to the performance of their desktop counterparts at all. But before we go in, I was going to do an unboxing section, but I just wanted to say that uh, this video is going to be more geared towards performance. Van from Morris actually did a great unboxing video and he talks about the I.O. and the dimensions and all that other stuff and you can check that out in the top right hand corner right about now if you're interested in all of that info. We connected the Aorus RTX 2070 gaming box to our only laptop that has Thunderbolt 3 which I mentioned is the Dell XPS 9550 that released in 2016 with some pretty beefy specs of the time. It's got the i7 6700HQ, a 512GB NVMe M.2, 32 gigs of RAM and a woeful fully underpowered 2 gig GTX 960M. When I got it, I was using it for editing 4K H.264 and it did the job pretty well. When I started editing more ProRes HQ and some 10-bit 4K stuff on this in this kind of weird pre-Gear Seekers era that we had going on, uh, I was traveling a lot and it started to chug a little bit and there wasn't a lot that I could do to make it perform better. Even when Adobe added Intel QuickSync to Premiere, it didn't change a lot with the timeline performance. Don't get me wrong, I really love my Dell XPS 9550. It's a great laptop for lightweight projects, but for more serious production work and even gaming, it just it just doesn't cut it. Okay, I went on a bit of a tangent, but yeah, let's uh, let, 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 let's see how this actually performs and why we're actually doing this video in the first place. What we're gonna do is see how the Aorus RTX 2070 gaming box improves performance in gaming and video production, and also see how it stacks up against a desktop RTX 2070 on our GPU test system. For the GPU benchmarks, we're using the, our, our regular three benchmarking applications that we use for GPUs, and yeah, these, these benchmarks are pretty good because they they show how the GPUs work in different situations. Let's start off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This benchmark is built right into the game and it gives us a good indication of how this game will perform on your system. Let's see how it went. For the 1080p test, we saw the gaming box get an average score of 58 frames per second. For the 1440p test, we saw the gaming box get an average score of 49 frames per second. For the 4K test, we saw the gaming box get an average score of 29 frames per second. Let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total. We used a 4K optimized preset, 1080p extreme preset, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. For the 1440p custom test, we saw the gaming box get an average score of 65 frames per second. For the 4K optimized test, we saw the gaming box get an average score of 37 frames per second. For the 1080p extreme test, we saw the gaming box get an average score of 36 frames per second. The last batch of tests is with the Final Fantasy 15 benchmarking tool. This is an updated version of the tool and includes DLSS and a few more optimizations to make this a far more accurate benchmarking tool. For the 1080p test, we saw the gaming box render a total amount of 5,080 frames. For the 1440p test, we saw the gaming box render a total amount of 2,928 frames. For 
for the 4K test who saw the gaming box render a total amount of 2,249 frames. From all of those results, we can see that on average, the RTX 2070 gaming box is around three times faster than the internal GTX 960M that ships with the XPS 9550, and around half the speed of the MSI RTX 2070 Gaming Z on our GPU test system. Now, we wanted to see what the real bottleneck of Thunderbolt 3 was on the 9550, and we wanted to rule out overclocking to get better frame rates in our benchmarks. We did a moderate overclock on the 2070 gaming box and we set the core clock to plus 115 megahertz and we set the memory overclock to around 850 megahertz and the results were literally identical because yeah, it's a bottleneck with Thunderbolt 3 and I thought I'd mention that because I'm sure someone is going to make a comment about overclocking this GPU. What about Premiere Pro CC 2019 performance? I thought I'd render out an actual project that I created on the XPS 9550 to add a little bit of context. I decided to re-render Arsenic 23, which as I mentioned was actually edited on the 9550. Let's talk a little bit about the contents of the project as well. As far as Gear Seekers projects go, our Arsenic projects are the lightest in both editing and color grading. We shoot them on a combination of cameras. However, this project in particular was shot on the Panasonic Lumix GH5 at 4K 24 frames per second in 10-bit long op with a bit rate of 150 megabits. This codec is pretty heavy as it is to edit. Timeline performance with the 960M and the Intel integrated graphics on this project was less than ideal. Scrubbing was infuriating and even at half and quarter of the playback resolution, it was, it was pretty annoying, I'm not gonna lie. And full perspective as well, our Threadripper 1950X machine that we usually edit all these videos on has no issues with GH5 footage whatsoever, full stop. There's no problem with it. With the RTX 2070 gaming box connected, we could switch the GPU drivers over to the Creative Ready drivers just to squeeze a little bit of extra performance out of Premiere. The first thing I noticed when the RTX 2070 was connected to the XPS was timeline and playback and scrubbing was just a lot more consistent and it actually made the project bearable to edit. But how, how about those render times? The total render time for this project with the GTX 960M and Intel Quick Sync enabled was 35 minutes and two seconds. The total render time for the project with the RTX 2070 gaming box and the creative ready drivers was 56 minutes and 46 seconds. The reason why the render time was longer was because we couldn't enable Intel Quick Sync when the 2070 was enabled. But that result didn't surprise me at all because let's be honest, Quick Sync helps a lot. But yeah, that's another topic for another video. And, and also to be honest, timeline performance for me is more important than the render time. But that's also another topic for another video. Overall, my particular use case with my Dell XPS 9550 I think the extra bump in gaming performance and Premiere timeline performance is nice, but is it 650 US dollars nice? Put it this way, if you don't have desk space for a full desktop machine or a monitor, I think it makes it a little bit more attractive because the Aorus RTX 2070 gaming box it's really, really, really small. <laughs> the only other scenario that would make sense to me for an upgrade to using one of these external GPUs is if you've got an older laptop with Thunderbolt 3 that is starting to show its age and you don't want to go out and buy a new laptop. And even then, I think it's a, a, a nice to have upgrade. I still don't think you really need one. But if you already have a laptop with a GTX 1060 or above, I probably couldn't recommend this at all because the performance from what we've observed is somewhere in the middle of a GTX 1060 6 gig and a 1070. It's not at a 2070 level, I'm gonna be absolutely honest here. And just a few footnotes to add to this as well. One thing I noticed when plugging in the RTX 2070 gaming box for the first time was the fan noise was horrifically loud. So yeah, make sure if you're grabbing one of these, go over to Gigabyte's website and update the firmware because it makes a huge difference 
and it makes it whisper quiet. Trust me, you really don't want those fans to be blowing your ears how loud this thing is stuck. <laughs> All right, guys, if you're interested in grabbing one of the Aorus RTX 2070 gaming boxes, there are links down in the description. Like I mentioned, they're going for around 650 US dollars on Amazon at the time of filming this video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you like this video, you know what to do. Tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seek. And yeah, I, I like it, but it's a little bit expensive for what you're getting. And yeah, if you've got an older laptop, I can see why you would want to use something like this. Otherwise, it's not really that attractive to me. But it is cool, which is why we covered it. Thanks for watching.